Welcome to a new series called Shadows of Legends, where I teach you about forgotten cars that you're going to want to remember. Everyone knows Ghostbusters. Whether or not you've seen the movie at all, anyone can recognize the iconic logo and catchy theme song. With the wide audience ranging from children to boomer nerds, Bussin makes pretty much everyone feel good. Mmm, I don't like that one. Just cut that line. There is, of course, one other fan favorite from this universally loved franchise. The interesting choice of car for paranormal janitors, a rare 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor Futura Duplex Ambulance. Isn't that kind of a mouthful? I thought so too. This car is shown on screen converted into a 1980s light show with fitting gadgets, hoses, antennas, and as much sci-fi nonsense you could fit on the roof of an old caddy. As a kid, this car caught my attention and completely converted me into a car guy, when at the time I could barely tell a DeLorean from an El Camino. Yeah, true story. I was so dumb as a kid that I thought my grandpa's El Camino was a DeLorean just because they both had square headlights and a big open back area. I'm serious. I'm not like much smarter than that today, but like at least I figured that one out over the years. Back to the car. While I could go on and on about the white ambulance with red fins that changed New York forever, I like to talk about the forgotten counterpart in a surprisingly interesting history. The car in question is this one. The gray primered pre-restoration Ecto-1 that Ray spends way too much money on for reasons that cannot be explained. Yeah, I can relate. I feel that one, Ray. If you're like most people, you might assume the studio had bought an ambulance, painted a gray for one shot, then made it the sole Ecto-1 for the rest of the filming. But this is not the case at all. Columbia had already owned and built two Ecto-1s, and they only needed this one for one shot. It was an entirely different car, rented and shipped across the country, to use for just the one driving scene and the one little shot in the firehouse, where Dana immediately beams every man in sight with her simp ray. All the information I'm relaying is thanks to the Facebook groups and GB fans. Special thanks to the Ghostbusters archive page and Alex Newborn on the GB fans forum for organizing this massive amount of information about this car. It's truly impressive documentation. Let's start at the beginning. In December of 1982, a young EMT named Roger Bay saw this used fire department vehicle on a Chicago used car lot with make offer written on the window. Roger was only 20 years old at the time and immediately fell in love with the car, and by the end of the week, he owned it. A year later, his company was contacted by Columbia Pictures, looking for his exact make and model car to act as a before shot for a new movie, and a deal was made for them to rent it for four months. During that time, Roger used some of the money Columbia had given him to fly down to California to see the filming. When he arrived, he was met with a black and gray ambulance, which if you've been paying attention, you'll notice it's supposed to be red and shiny. Apparently, Columbia had taken the liberty of methifying Roger's perfect caddy, which was never discussed, but promised that they would pay him extra for the cost of returning it back to normal. The filming went smoothly, and there's not much to say about it, as it was only needed for 40 seconds of total screen time. When Roger and his then-girlfriend Annette got the car back, it also came with some bumper damage on the back, which just goes to show why you don't let interns drive the car and why no one will ever drive my Recto 1. Ever. Never. Ever. Roger was one of the first Ghostbusters fans, probably only tied with Jason Reitman, the director's son who spent a lot of time on set and is now directing the third installment of the series. Roger was so excited for opening night that him and his girlfriend made paper Ghostbusters logos for the doors taped them on, and went to a drive-in for the first showing. Like, I bet people were so confused when, the, when they saw this black ghost thing in the drive-in movie before the movie started. Like, there was no context or anything. It was just this old ambulance painted like it just came out of Detroit with ghosts on the side, and this guy with, like, matching shirts. The guy and his girlfriend with matching shirts with the same logo. Like... I guess they must have been pretty confused, but can you imagine how confused they were when they saw the car on the screen? Like, I mean, I don't know if they would have started to finally ma it made more sense, or if they would have been even more confused. Either way, I guarantee it was some pretty good shit. <laughs> uh, Roger and his now wife, Annette, 
owned the car for four more years until he finally made the difficult decision to part with it. The car went to a paramedic in Illinois and is believed to still be in the same ownership after all this time. Hopefully in deep hibernation, somewhere safe in the ancient catacombs of downstate Illinois. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has just been something I have wanted to do for a little while. You know, the, G the Ghostbusters fans already know the story about this because it's been plastered over the forums, but... I figured it's time to kind of bring this to the uh, to the bigger the big screen the YouTube screen. Anyways, this has been Shadows of Legends.